Today is July the 28th. Should we be afraid of God? Let's find out together as we look at Matthew chapter 10. So the next command uh, that uh, comes from Jesus to us, we find in Matthew chapter 10. There's an entire section here, starting in verse 26 and going through verse 31, that appears to have contradictory commands. Matthew 10, 26, don't be afraid of those who threaten you, for the time is coming when everything that's covered will be revealed. All that is secret will be made known to all. What I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when daylight comes. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They can't touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Now what's the price of two sparrows? One copper coin, but not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. The very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. So in this passage, um, Jesus begins talking about fear. Now, he's talking about the time when his disciples will be preaching in his name, and he predicts for them resistance, persecution. And he says, don't fear the ones who can kill your body. Instead, fear God, because he kills not only body, but the soul as well. But then we come to the last verse and it says, verse 31, so don't be afraid. So what is it? Are we to fear God or are we not to fear God? And the answer is yes. <laughs> are we to fear God? Yes. We are to fear God. God is all powerful. He has the power not only to kill our physical life, but to condemn us to an eternally uh, separation from him. He has the power to kill the soul as well as the body. But on the other hand, what does God do? Jesus talks about the sparrows. Now, apparently in Jesus' time, the poor would actually eat sparrows. Um, they were cheap, they were plentiful, and they were cheap to buy. So uh, you could make a small meal out of a couple of sparrows for just a copper coin, a hundredth of a day's wage. Jesus said uh, sparrows are insignificant when it comes to the Israelite economy. But God knows when even one of them falls to the ground. Fear God because he has the power to kill both body and soul. But you don't have to fear God because he loves you. Now that's the message that we consistently get from Jesus. In fact, not only does he tell us that God loves us, he commands us to love God. You know the passage in Matthew chapter 22, when a young man comes to Jesus and says, what are the great commands? Jesus says, the first is this, love God. The second is similar, love your neighbor. Now when Jesus says, love God. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Um, 
it's a beautiful passage. It's, it's a prayer that a good Jew would recite four or five times a day when he gets up in the morning, when he stops for lunch, when he comes home in the evening, when he goes to bed. He would stand and cite, recite the Shema. Uh, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Had. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God. And the way you love it in Hebrew is interesting. With all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your, and it's interesting. The Hebrew is really unusual here because mind and heart are nouns. But the third element that you should love them with is actually an adverb. Meodka. The adverb meod in Hebrew means much. The particle ka at the end of that word means your. Love God with all your heart. Love God with all your mind. Love God with all your very much with everything, with all your strength. Fear God, yeah, but he loves you. So that fear doesn't have to be a depressing, overwhelming fear. It can be a loving fear, knowing that the creator and controller of the universe has our best interest in mind. Do you love God today? Please like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll ask the question, how important is the Old Testament?